Hi friends, I am back with another quick tip video brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. This week I have come up with an interesting Transact SQL quick tip. It's been a while since we did something on Transact SQL, so I thought like maybe we will do Transact SQL this week. But as usual, I wanted to make sure that the topic is interesting. So I have come with a very interesting topic which really helps people who are working with JSON based data in SQL Server. As you know, SQL Server started JSON support from SQL 2016 version onwards and there have been different functions available for shredding as well as generating JSON. So today's tip is based on JSON modify and JSON carry functions which are functions used for shredding or getting the data from within a JSON data structure. So here in this tip we are going to see how we can utilize JSON modify so as to do data masking on JSON array. So what is basically data masking? Data masking is basically replacing sensitive data with some dummy data or garbled data so that the sensitive data is not shown to the people who are unauthorized. So we will look at a very easy tip by which how we can utilize the json modify function so as to apply a simple masking logic which can be utilized for garbling your actual data while you are generating test data in your test end. So let's go quickly into the demo and see how that can be achieved using json modify function. So let's open up a SQL management studio and we will start with a very simple json based query and see how the json modify function works. So here we have a simple json which is stored inside a variable called i and it consists of uh, the details of an employee. So it has his id, the first name, the last name, the email, the gender, the SSN number, the phone number and these are just test data and now the intention is to apply a simple data masking POC on top of it. So here what we need to do is like we are basically trying to change the first name of this uh, JSON into a dummy data like 1, 2, 3, 4 for example. So here we have a single JSON element inside the variable and uh, as you see we are directly calling the JSON modify function on top of it passing the variable as the first argument and then we are passing the path xpath within that uh, JSON document to find out the element which we are going to replace so we need to replace first name in under the root we need to replace the first name so root is designated by dollar symbol so dollar dot first name and we are replacing it with one two three four so this is a very straightforward query so let's see how when we execute it what happens so now that we executed if you check the result you could be able to see that the first name which was penelope will get replaced by one two three four so this is as expected because it was a simple json data it was a single json element it was able to replace the first name inside the json element with the number one two three four it was just a dummy data so it's working fine this is the most simplest of the scenario now let's move into a little bit more complicated scenario see here instead of we have another variable called j where we have instead of a single element we have multiple json elements coming inside as an array so as you see it's an array that's the square braces and again you are applying the same logic here we are applying json modify passing the variable and we are asking it to find out the first name which is just under the root and we are going to replace it with one two three four Though this sounds like a very straightforward thing, if you run this code, you can see that this is not going to replace your first name. So if you see the result, again see the first name is Penelope and Elsa. It's not getting replaced to 1, 2, 3, 4. The reason is because here the JSON data is coming inside a JSON array. And you have multiple elements coming within this. So it's not straightforward for you to change data like this. Because it comes inside an array, you have to first parse the array and go to each one of the elements and inside that it will find out the json document and inside that you need to apply the json modifier so that is the reason why a simple json modify function call will not work in this case so if you see the tweet expression for this case it will look like this so what it is doing is that it is instead of 
just calling dollar which represents the root in this case there is no one dollar there are two roots because there are two documents so we need to refer each of the document within the array for that purpose we have to put dollar of zero for the first document and dollar of one for the second document so when it says dollar of zero it, it goes to the first document and inside that it gets the first name and replace with one two three four then it goes to the second document on top so there are two json modifiers one to modify each of the documents now if you run it it should replace the both the documents and you should have the name as one two three four four both the documents so if i run both of this together we can see that the first case it doesn't replace it in the second case it replaces it to one two three four just because of this nested json modify call and we are passing explicitly the index of the document within the array that makes it easier for it to find out but then the question is what will happen if we have an array which consists of loads of elements and especially it becomes a problem when we doesn't know how many elements are there inside the array that's when it gets really complicated so if sometimes one one uh, value might have an array with 80 documents another one with 100 documents another one will be 1000 documents so you can't write a statement which will automatically adapt to each one of those cases and you can't keep on nesting json modify forever because that will be really clumsy kind of code. so then what is the solution so that's when we go to a different type of approach so here you see this is the example data we have where we have uh, say we have a table called test and we have five rows inside that the first row itself consists of thousand elements it's a big array of thousand json elements and second row consists of second value consists of 10 json documents third one consists of 50 documents so it's a large array of so many elements coming inside in such a case how will you replace the first name last name etc and we are going to replace so we are going to apply a data masking on top of the entire data whichever sensitive data is coming inside like the first name last name whichever allows to identify an individual we are going to mask so we are going to change first name last name email then we have ssn we have phone number all of this we are going to replace so let's see how the json modify looks in this case in this case we need to use a uh, amalgamation of json modify and also json query functions so json query function for giving us the part of that document each time so there has to be three steps here first is there should be something which helps us to iterate through each of these documents inside the array because we don't know how many documents are there inside each array so there should be something which helps us to iterate second thing is uh, on each iteration we need to get the part of the json which needs to be replaced and then we will apply json modify on top of that so as to replace it with the corresponding replacement values so if you see the query for this the query will look like this so we are creating a cte at first so this is for getting us the changing values so what we are doing inside the cte is basically a json query function first this is for identifying the part of the document which needs to be changed each time and to make sure that we are iterating through each of these documents we use a cross apply and we use open json so what open json does is that open json parses this json document the array of json documents and it will provide one by one document at a time so this can be done by simply running this part so if you just run this on a separate query so you can see what happens so if you just run this cross apply part you can see that it parses for each of the rows so we have five rows here for the each of the rows it parses through each of the elements and it will give us the elements so for id equal to 1000 we have a big array of 1000 documents so if you see the key the key represents the id of each of those documents so from 0 till 999 it will go so there will be 1000 documents individual documents inside that so it will parse through that json and give us the details of each of those documents so still 999 it will go so at the at the 999 it, it comes to the end of that array and similarly for the second one if you see the second id which is the second row within your table it has around 10 uh, documents so it will go from 0 to 9 like this it will parse through each of these documents within your big array and it will give them as separate separate rows similarly for the third one it consists of 0 to 49 because there are 50 rows in that so it will go till 49 like that it will parse so that is what the cross apply open json 
does and one more thing is when it passes it automatically creates the key value it generates the key value which is a sequence number from 0 to the maximum document so if you compare this to our earlier query we were passing that index value inside that index value is automatically returned by this key column so what you can do is like you can make use of this key column if you pass this key column as dynamic inside your json query you will be able to get the corresponding elements each time during your each iteration so that is exactly what we are creating in the query below so if you see the query below it clearly if you see this part what it does is that inside the json query it will pass the column of the table where you have that big json array and then for that parsing part it will make use of this concatenate function to dynamically generate the index value so the index value it will get it from the key and the rest of the part is static dollar of so this if you see this this dollar of is static what is what is changing is the key so first it will be 0 1 2 3 etc up to the total number of documents inside your array so that's what we generate here using this concatenate expression so once you pass that particular dynamic key it will make sure that it will go and pick up that document so for at first it will pick up the first document then the next iteration it will pick up the second document like that every iteration it will keep on pick up picking up one 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 documents and based on the document that is inside what it does is that it will apply a series of json modifies on top of it each of the json modifies will modify each field inside that so the first json modify will go to the first name inside each one of these documents and replace it with xxxx similarly the next json modify will go to the last name change it to yyyy and the next one will go and change the email to uh, xxxxx yyyyy and then the next one will be changing xssn and similarly the last one will be changing the phone number so if you use this logic it will make sure that whatever you are getting at the end of that that value is what you will use for updating it back so once you update this back what will happen is that your actual value within your json will get overwritten by these mask values so that's exactly what you will get as the result so if you just run this update using the cte the cte will generate the values for each of them and the update will go and update all your five rows and now if you try to run this result you can see that it will have all the values replaced every element will have all values replaced see all the values will get replaced right first names will be getting replaced by xxx second one yyy like that everything will get replaced so here you are making use of three steps first one is that iteration step that is done by means of this cross apply so it will split parse that array and give you the document one by one and for each of the document it will auto ret all also return a column called key which will give you the index name using that index name you automatically generate this dynamic x path which will make sure that we can go and parse that document and then when you pass the json query on top of it it will give you that document and for each of the document then you apply separate json modifies on top of it to replace each of those field fields first name last name etc and finally once you have the cte ready you can then use the cte to join to your main table and update your actual json array column with the new value that you have generated and this json query is just to wrap it within an array because when you parse it you get it again as individual json documents so if you want to make it back into an array you need to use again another json query on top of it and just concatenate this array wrapper on top of it so for that purpose you are using json query and inside that it is your concatenation logic which i am making use of the stuff function for concatenating each of those replaced values into a single list of json documents so this will give you a list of json documents with the changed values so changed values means each values will be masked and then i will create generate this list and on the list i will be wrapping it within two square braces to make it in back into an array so what you do here is from the array you split out the individual values change each of those values by using the json modify after you change them you again join them back into individual documents and once you join them back you will get a list of documents comma separated list of documents and when you put that array wrapper on top of it it will become again a json array and you will just assign it back to the actual column so finally when you 
run this and when you look into that final column in your table it will still contain the single five rows with that json array but the only difference is that if you see each of those json array all the values will be changed it will be all the sensitive values will be changed by the data mask that you have. so this gives you an uh, easier way to apply data masking whenever you want to work with a json array consisting of lots of documents so i hope this detailed walkthrough helped you to understand how you can apply json modify and json query to iterate through all the documents inside a huge json array and parse out each of the columns within the document and replace it with your own values and how you can nest this same logic so as to achieve data masking on top of a huge json array value consisting of lots of documents with as usually keep sending your feedback and let me know your comments on these videos keep following my channel for getting useful tips like this and please press subscribe and click on bell icon to get notifications meet you all soon with another useful tip like this till then bye and thanks for it